It's Entomology Animated, celebrating the amazing biology of insects using the power of digital animation. Ding! Hi, this is Eric for Entomology Animated. In this video, uh, I'm going to continue painting textures for the rainbow scarab beetle model that I have here in Substance Painter. And I'm going to focus on uh, these brown parts, adding a little bit of color variation to make them look a little bit more interesting and natural. Take a look at some of the reference images that I've taken before. Again, these are not the greatest photos in the world, but they do show, to show what I'm talking about. So you can see on the antenna, we have a variation in reds and orange and a little bit of detail here, and also some of the other parts. It's a little bit hard to see because of all the hair, but um, I definitely want to have some of this reddishness. It's, it's kind of a subsurface scattering effect, but we can also kind of help it along with the texture a little bit. Uh, some of the subsurface stuff will be taken care of in the final render, of course. But there's a little bit of red, you know, right here that you can see and other parts. We can start adding that in, making it look a bit more natural. Also some darker colors, some blacks, and it looks like there's even some dark greens here. So that's what we're doing in this video. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to focus just on the uh, texture set for the mouth parts. So I'm going to start hiding the things that we don't need. I forget which texture set it is, so okay, let's keep that one, let's keep that one, let's hide that, hide these lights. We'll just focus on the eyes and the mouth parts. And I think I want to start with the antenna, so that's 1013, so let's, let's just have 1013 visible. Let's do the antenna and the eyes. Okay, so I sped up the video a little bit, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off these other masking layers. Well, let's, I just turned them on, let's turn them off. Turn them off, and then I'm going to add a new layer above that sort of brown, glossy plastic layer. So new layer, and I'm going to call it added color, and I'm going to add a fill to this layer. And for this, I just want kind of a pale yellowish color. The, the actual color, I just need to get it in the ballpark, because I'm going to be painting a lot of colors on top of this. So just something to get me started. So that kind of yellow layer. And then I'm going to reduce the roughness, so it's a little bit shinier. And then I'm going to add a black mask, and I've gone into polygon selection mode, or polygon fill mode. And for this selector, I've selected mesh selection. So that means if I click on each of these meshes, it's going to reveal that part of the mask. So this is just so I can have, because I had the eyes and the antenna in the same texture set. So I have a mask that's just masking the eyes and revealing the antenna. And now what I'm going to do is I've switched to paintbrush and I'm going to paint black into that mask at the ends of the uh, antennae. The very I'm just using a different brush here. So, so I'm blending between those two layers, that yellow layer and the brown glossy layer below it, um, just to have kind of more of an organic fade here, just to get this started. So. What you're seeing is I'm actually painting on the mask, I'm not painting a brown color, I'm painting a black color into the mask, revealing the brown color in the end of the antenna. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to that yellow layer, that added color layer, and I'm going to add a paint effect. And now I've selected the actual layer, not the mask. So I'm selecting the layer, and hopefully this is not too confusing, I'm going to paint a color into the layer itself using that uh, paint effect. So um, I'm just kind of doing just a little bit of a dark reddish brown blend here at the end of the antenna. And it's just kind of a way to kind of, you know, finesse that fade between the, the yellowness of the, the antenna and the brown parts in the base of the antenna. Um, so I did this to kind of just add a little bit of detail here. And then you'll see in the next steps, I'm gonna add more paint. Okay, so jumping ahead a little bit, uh, I've painted some colors into that layer. So I have, here's the layer selected, selected the color part of the layer, and I've added this paint effect. So if I turn the paint effect off, you can see that's where I was. If I turn it back on, the colors are painted into that. And it's kind of a nice way to, uh, you know, paint some colors in and then be able to make adjustments afterwards. Uh, the only problem is, is that adding this paint effect to this layer I noticed that there was a significant lag in the strokes as I was painting. Now this is a really huge uh, monster model. I've got all these texture sets, so that's part of it. Um, but you know, I think it, it was just a little bit too much 
uh, with all the masking and all the other stuff that's going on is really starting to slow down. So uh, what I did for the eye color is I turn this on, you can see I've got kind of these yellow and brown splotches. I simply just added a new layer above this one and then just painted directly into that layer. And I found that to be much faster, much more responsive, just not quite as flexible as using the paint effect. So, you know, there's um, the cost benefit thing, depending which route you go. Just painting into a layer is much simpler. So that, that is also a benefit too, because there's less to, to worry about and get confused about because sometimes it can get very confusing as to if you're painting into the layer or painting into the mask or you're painting into the mask layer or you're painting into the paint layer that can start to make your brain do backflips so you can just create a layer and add some color to it another approach um, if you turn on the material the end result this is not exactly what the final model is going to look like because this has no subsurface scattering so in the final model there's going to be a lot of subsurface scattering, sort of a very translucent effect on the antenna. So these colors are going to be really subtle, and it's not going to look quite like this painted metal that I have here. Uh, so I kind of exaggerate the colors quite a bit when I'm doing uh, this stage, just in anticipation. I can always come back in and dial them in a little bit more. Uh, let's turn back my, let's turn on my little. Uh, dirt, AO dirt, and dust layers here so you can see that's what the final antenna looks like. And of course it'll also be covered with hairs. That's going to affect our uh, look quite a bit. So I spent some time painting in colors on various parts of the model, the non-metallic parts. So a lot of these uh, orange and light brown colors are painted directly onto the surface in a new layer for each of the texture sets. So adding just a little bit more realism and some color variation. You can see a little bit on the legs here. If I switch over to base color, it becomes more apparent. So you can see it down here. A little bit more color variation, making the whole thing look a bit more natural. If I switch back to material view and zoom in on the antenna, you can see there are some issues right here. So these are errors that were created when I baked out the high to low because these parts of the model were close together. And so based on the settings that I used, a uh, little bit of uh, kind of overlap was created and baked into the texture map. So I'm going to address that next. So I'm just going to show you my technique for fixing that stuff uh, as quickly as possible. Uh, if I switch to the normal view, it becomes, let's just do normal plus height. There we go. You can really see it's it's quite apparent right here. So let's paint those out, and then we can consider the texturing part, uh, for the most part, finished. Okay, so here's my quick and dirty uh, method for fixing the normal maps. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the clone brush to come in here and just kind of fix some of these errors. But I'm actually not going to do it in this project file. I'm going to do it in another one that just contains the antenna and the eyes. Only because uh, I don't want to mess with all these textures that I baked out that are feeding into the masks and the, all these complicated layers. Uh, I just kind of want to fix a few normal maps and make it as simple as possible. So to that end, I'm going to bake out the, all the textures for this texture set. Then create a new substance file with just this piece of geometry in it and import just the textures that I need to fix, which is really going to be just the normal. So let's go to File, uh, Export Textures. And I've just turned on 1013, so I've turned off all of these others because I don't need them, all right? So I'm going to turn them off and let's expand this. And I'm going to export base color, roughness, metallic, normal height. This is based on the PBR metal rough preset. If you need to change your preset, you can go to the configuration, add and remove channels and textures, etc. I'm not going to get into that, but uh, this is how I'm using this configura configuration. I believe it had a missive originally, but I deleted that from the configuration. So um, these are the textures I want to export. So I'm going to hit. So then I'm going to select a folder, and in my project, I'm going to create a folder called. Uh, let's call it texture fix. And I'm going to create a new folder in here called export. And 
then I want to make sure that I'm going to export 16-bit PNGs. I think that should work. And let's hit export. Okay, after a couple minutes, it's finished. Let's choose OK. And now I'm going to create a new project. We'll call it. And uh, I'm going to select my mesh. So I'm going to go to my meshes folder. And all I need to select is this 1013 low, because that's all I'm going to worry about. That's just the antenna and the eyes. I'm going to select that. I'm going to set the document resolution to 4K. And then I'm going to add my textures that I just exported. So that's in texture fix export and put it in the wrong folder but that's okay put it in a new folder so let's select all these and choose open and then choose okay um, i think i've saved all the changes here so i need to save that and after a few moments here we have our mesh and now what i'm going to do is i'm going to set this to uh, normal mode I'm going to go to my layers here. I'm going to set the layer mode to normal, meaning normal map. And then I'm going to add a fill for this layer. So we'll choose add fill. Let's see, it's just filled with that normal color. Let's go down here and choose the channels that we want to fill. For this, I just want to do normal. So I'm going to turn off everything except for normal. And uh, in, instead of just having a purple color here, I'm going to click on this button to open up the texture resources. I've typed 1013 into the search field. It just remembers it from the last time I did this. And I'm going to choose that normal map, which is a normal map we just baked out. Now you can see there it is with all its glorious errors and everything else. So now that I have that set up, I'm going to turn on. I'm going to go over here, and now I need to actually paint out these errors. So I'm going to go in here, add an effect, add a paint. And then let's turn on symmetry, just to make life a little bit easier. It should have symmetry on, not immediately apparent. And then for fixing stuff like this, I'm just gonna go here. Let's choose the clone brush. I'm gonna choose clone relative source. Let's move the size down, the opacity down just a little bit. The hotkey for selecting a spot is V, so I'm going to click V and then start painting right here. And if we're not seeing anything, I need to set the mode for the paint to pass through. You can see there's the stuff I just cloned, so now I can start to see it. Let's bring up the opacity a little bit more and bring down the size. Now I can see I'm painting out using the clone brush these areas right here. Now I'm painting, this is just a spot that's probably not going to be seen very much, but it's good for just testing and making sure everything's working. So let's make sure that symmetry is actually working. Looks like it is. Okay. So I'm going to spend a few moments painting out the errors in the normal maps. And I'm mostly just interested in the antenna and the legs. Like I said, anything to you know, might expose some errors if if it's moving around, like the antenna or the legs are moving around. I don't want to see those errors in the normal map. Um, so I'm going to spend a few moments doing that. So I spent a few moments uh, painting out some of the errors. If I turn the paint effect on and off, you can kind of see those fixed areas turning on and off here in the UV view. So I'm going to do the same thing for the legs and any other part of the model that I find a lot of problems with the normal maps. Then I'm going to expect, export all the textures and start bringing these into Maya with the model and seeing if we can get a nice render going using Octane uh, for Maya. So that's coming up in the next video. So if you're enjoying these videos on YouTube, be sure to check out my Noman Workshop video series on hyper-realistic insect design. Uh, it's got something like 21 chapters, and I go through my process for designing and modeling insects, plus a lot of information on uh, entomology and insect anatomy. Thanks again for watching.